Hello. Hello, Glenn. Hi. How are you? Uh, all right. I guess. I'm, uh... <laughs> that doesn't sound too enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm dealing with um uh, day-to-day things. Yeah. Boring. Guess... Huh? Boring. Worried, you said? Boring. Boring. Boring day to day things. Boring day to day things. Yeah, that. But I'm, you know, I learn new things every day. That's not everything's boring. I guess my life it's not that boring when you know about this stuff. Yeah. It's not boring, I guess. But um. No, if there's one thing about searching for truth and answers. There's always something around each corner. Yeah. A lot of it expected, some unexpected. But that's the fun of it all. Yeah. I just, um, I was thinking how, like, they talk about, like, the union and everything, like how, uh, the, you know, union with, people back to hermaphrodite with this thing. But I think it's also, I was thinking, I think it also could be an allegory for the union of, or that reunion of the Neanderthal and clan mother inside the new slave. Yeah. Thinking that, so. Sounded, uh, makes sense to me, you know. Well, it, they they need a slave that can sleep 50 years, huh. wake up, and look around, report back, and if necessary, begin a colony until they're resupplied. If not, wish them all a happy rest of their life, uh-huh. and uh, within 40 years, they should all be dead. Okay. Yeah, I sent you an email. I guess I figured it was a little long, right? Yeah. Probably read through that stuff already. But it was um, it was uh Bacon's uh, when uh, the New Atlantis, and he talks about the um advancements in learning and stuff. Yeah, but this one was uh, yeah, yeah. He talked and uh, that one I sent you. He talks about like the sciences that are more advanced yeah. stuff. And he talks about like underground submarines, underground yep. vessels. Yeah, I but, have that book, The New Atlantis. And I noticed I was reading through another book, and he mentioned, and they mentioned uh, this god named uh, Dagon, and how it's all related to like the preserver underwater. They were saying, oh, and it goes to Jonah and the Noah. They were saying number two is number one, so our Dagon. Is the word dragon. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but there was. I thought it was just like a like an allegory, like because what they were explaining, like it seemed like they were talking about a submarine. Well, submarines would be their way of flying because they live below the sea, mm-hmm. and a submarine in water is not much different than a spacecraft flying through space. It's just their limitations. So, but you you learn a lot of lessons in submarines that are applicable to space travel. How old do you think the submarine is? How old? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I suspect they had submarines um, probably in uh, the time of India, India. forty thousand BC. And and dirigibles, you know, like they have uh, the ones flying over football fields. Mm-hmm. I suspect they had those as well. That would have been the obvious method of flying in the olden days. And because they moved a lot of heavy stuff around, mm-hmm. that would be the obvious method for lifting things. Or taking the heads to Easter Island, that kind of stuff. So, like Bacon, he made it obvious, like 
a lot, all this stuff. Is, uh, and I know whenever they release something to the public, it's a lot older than what they really think. Because he was basically releasing things. He was their their vehicle for the distribution of uh, information during his time, and uh, uh, he was uh, the contributing managing editor of the King James Version of the Bible, and uh, also for all of Shakespeare's work. Since Shakespeare never left the the place he was in, in, in London, he could not have known about Denmark or, or uh, Northern Italy or whatever you know, places he talked about. So it it had to be uh, it had to be Bacon bringing the information forward. His links were to the Persians. He uh, he spoke uh, Persian fluently, mm. and uh, that would be the direction in which the information would come out of uh, India and uh, Antarctica. Have you like done any like? Like in depth research on like these civilizations. Well, in in depth is is uh, Too a word that that would mean it's not possible yeah. uh, because in in depth, if you do anything in depth, it takes a lifetime. Yeah. And if you're going to do the overview of uh, Sixty to a hundred thousand years of civilization. Uh, you're, you're not really going to go into what you would refer to as in depth on any single topic. Basically, doing a, a big picture. Yeah, I, you know, I, I want to know how you how you do this. Like, I'll find these things too. Like, you find these links with words and. Stuff like that, but you're able to like paint a picture, like say a story, just from these links. Well, that that's because these links basically unlock a memory, and and it's the memory of uh, the things gone by that that tell you the bigger story. The uh, it's like, you know, Dr. Wilder Penfield used to do studies on the brain at McGill University. And uh, he found that uh, as, as he touched certain portions of the brain and the patient was, was awake, uh, they would not only recall certain events, they would relive them. The entire picture uh, with all of the sensory activity was linked to recalling an event and then it launched everything else. So it's it's no different whether you do it mechanically by touching the brain or you do it by um, awakening a part of the brain by finding a link. You know, no doubt in my mind that I remember places and times and stuff like that with it, without getting involved into the personality thing. You know, people yeah. who, uh, who say they've lived in the past always want to be somebody important, like <laughs> Cleopatra or yeah. you know, Caesar or Jesus or what have you. I... I don't see uh, any of that, you know, day-to-day story. I I see the big picture of uh, where I was, and what I did. So, if you were to take, if, like, say, somebody were to take your DNA and basically just make a new version of you, and as that new version of you gets older, you think it'll remember like memories well that's what i am i mean i i'm basically 
a a new copy of some old DNA. I'm basically being told that my DNA is original Cro-Magnon. And what am, okay, most people around us, what, what what would you say about their DNA? Well, DNA is constantly being recombined. People live and people die. Some people's DNA is is retained by nature for use again, and and that means it can be recycled into uh, other living things by being absorbed in the grass, that kind of thing. If you ever walk by in a field and you see a dead animal on the ground, mm-hmm. and you it's you know you leave it there. Over time, as you go by, as I do, because I have to cut the grass a lot, yeah. uh, you notice that the grass where that animal was uh, is greener mm-hmm. than the rest of it. So obviously the chemistry of that individual has been absorbed into the grass. So along comes a cow and eats that grass, and along comes a butcher who puts it in the stores and somebody eats that. And you have the transfer of DNA. You don't need much, right? Eh? You don't need, like, a lot of it, right? Just a little bit? Stem cells, um, you don't even use it. You just make more cells from the ones you have, and, and you use those cells and the originals are retained. So it's it's, uh, cloning using different parts of the body, whether it's marrow in the bone or uh, saliva or sperm, uh, have different value. And, And the closer you get to stem cells, the more you can make copies of the person over and over again. So if you use something other than uh, stem cells, what does that do? Well, you'll run out. You'll you'll be able to make a copy, and it'll last for a while. Then you make another one, and when you're out of material, you're out of that person's DNA. That uh, allegory is given in the uh, the Hebrew Bible in the story of uh, Enoch, where after receiving the plate from God underground, the whole story of Enoch shifts to uh, people who live longer and says one person lives 300 and some years, another one lives 700 and some years, and Methuselah lives 960 some years, and they stop there. And that's all an allegory for, you know, they, they made a test using DNA, and they were able to replicate the, the one person maybe six or seven times, and he lasted 300 years, not the same person, Mm -hmm. but the same DNA, whereas the second one was a better quality of DNA, and he lasts 700 and some years, either better quality or they had more of it, and the third one is Methuselah, who basically lives uh, 964 years, he 963 years, I think it is. The uh, the allegory there is he's he's basically being copied from stem cell, and therefore he will live longer. Like I know, when I'm reading through the Masonic book, they never really mention, they never really mention Enoch. He's not really talked about. They like, they talk more on Noah and yeah, and these. 
because Noah was the genetic engineer after the Ice Age. Oh, and Enoch was before? Enoch was before him. Oh. He was he was the guy who brought forward the information and Noah was his grandson, I believe. Oh, that's why he had the ark because it was after. When did you get like hints that they started growing their own like these people? Well, this, well obviously they had to do it in order to divide men from women. It had to be a process of genetic engineering. But it wasn't as perfected, I think. I, 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 I well, it was perfected in the sense of dividing genders, mm -hmm. but it uh, it was basically the first step away from cloning uh, simply reproducing the same person it was it was the beginning of making other people rather than copies of the same clan mother to do any of that uh, there you would need a, a computer yeah because it's how it's so like laid out how they do it yeah, a human being is how it's so like methodical and yeah. well calculated. And so the, their hint is always that the Neanderthaler was frozen in ice. Yeah, the social engineering, they were like frozen in time basically. Yeah. Right. Couldn't move forward, therefore was limited to the amount of information he could deal with and and if you only deal with one topic then for thousands of years you become an expert in that particular field and i think like at that time like the, the planet was totally totally different than what well it the planet has gone through four ice ages so is that publicly known yeah So it 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 all depends what comes flying by uh, in the solar system. If it's hot, then you get global warming. If it's cold, you get an ice age. Because what it does is extend the ellipse of the orbit of the Earth, keeping it either closer. Uh, to the sun or further away from the sun. Mm -hmm. And what it picks up when it's further away will enhance the seasons on Earth. If it's cold, then the time that there is ice is much longer during a year than if the thing is warm, where you would get global warming. So the visit of Alder Amin mm -hmm. Uh, which is about to make us really hot. How how many thousand years was it? Seven or five? What? Seven or thousand? Uh, seven or five thousand? Yeah. For sure. For for the passing of a polar star? Yeah, the new one, Alder. I mean, for the well, next. Uh, all of the hints within astrology and astronomy are that a polar star has an effect upon the Earth either visual or weather-wise, for a period of somewhere between ten and 12,000 years. Yeah, I was looking, I, I was watching a computer simulation not too long ago on, on supernova. Yeah, that's an explosion of a star. Yeah, it was incredible, man. It was pretty powerful. Yeah. And they have another one they called um, hypernova. And so that was like when uh, you're directly under it. Yeah. Direct. And you said that they're going to induce this? Well, not a supernova, because a supernova blows the planet to smithereens. Mm -hmm. A nova only deals with the surface. It does not affect the core mm -hmm. or the mantle but it can cause everything else on the surface to melt. 
like continents and and the oceans can mix and and become quicksand. However, in this particular plan they have, which is based upon the lessons learned in the past, that when a planet or a star such as Alder Amin comes by, the people on the surface would take refuge underground to get away from the extensive heat. So in order not to allow people to go underground, this time they want to light the coal seam and thereby create fires underground. That's but that's not going to happen until like 12... First they're going to create and induce Nova, and then all the means coming. So it's like... They can create the Nova tomorrow because they can light the underground uh, fires by a collision activated by a particle accelerator. That would so it would be a Nova from the inside rather than from the outside. Yeah. That would uh, basically be the first step. It's uh, In the Bible, it's dealt with as... Gomorrah, yeah. rather than Sodom. Sodom already happened. Gomorrah is going to happen. So go Roma. Yeah. And uh, what it's all about is fire and brimstone. So fire underground causes brimstone. Brimstone are the explosion of gases and petroleum from underground that pop out to the surface and thereby create smoke and heat and and uh, the uh, greenhouse effect. Plus, it burns everything. Why do you think they would destroy everything on the surface if all their means coming anyway? All their mean would send people down underground. Yeah, they don't. And they would survive until its passing starts losing its effect. That's what they've done in the past. They don't want the people who are on the surface of the earth to survive. They want a different kind of person, a conglomerate place, Mm -hmm. and therefore the people who are already here become a nuisance to the future goals of the computers who are running the show. I was just watching a movie on Star Trek. Nemesis. They they show all the the little allegories and hints mm-hmm. about this whole story. And uh, I think I just think it made me think how like them going around space in a ship is basically this new slave conglomerate all in this ship. Yeah, you call. Oh, bag lady. Yeah, the difference is they're showing it as uh, as if they were human beings. But they have all the different in races. A colony. Yeah. But they're not going to be a colony. They're going to be pods of one. That's all you need, right? Yeah, because you got so many places to go looking. Mm-hmm. You don't. You don't need the hassle of sending up uh, people who might fight or fall in love or what have you. Uh, So you just send one. And you send one in every imaginable direction. Billions of them go off over time, each in a different angle, exploring the solar system and eventually the universe. But this one, that, I guess it's correct in saying it's one because it's a conglomerate of everything held in one, but it's chemistry different because it's male, female, and Neanderthal. Yeah, so exactly. what's the number of uh, or the chemistry of like Neanderthal? Cause well, that's, that's why they show the, the symbol of the letter Y. Two and one. Yeah, two and one, male, female added to the longer shaft 
Y is basically like upside down. That's why you always, when you first, I guess, first finding out who the, the culprits were, you always use that calling the liberator. Yeah. And they are two one because they show you that in the Bible because he's both God and the yeah. devil. It's two and one. Yeah. Everything's two and one. And it has harm and assist principles. Yeah. Remus and Romulus. Chemist. <laughs> your chemist. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, when I was watching this movie, it reminded me of Remus and Romulus and Cain and Abel. Yeah. And also this, this, this concept, they make whole systems and philosophies off of all this. It's, it's the basic thesis of it all. Yeah. The, the premise of life is you start off with two, you divide it. And then you reassemble it in a better way. But then two is then really number one. And that's the yeah. one they're going to send out with yeah. Oh, man. It's like a puzzle. I, just, I don't know. It's like, um, what's the word? It's like interconnected. So. Yeah, it's a jigsaw. <laughs> yeah. It's just, um, I don't know, uh, finding uh, people like who can, I guess everybody, because all those people who come on your farm, they're all, do they give you insight? Into of course, of course, because everybody's brain functions differently, and everybody having seen similar things, um, it, it excites different memories in, in their minds. Mm. They see it from that point of view. That's why one person is never enough to give a complete answer. That's why you need that uh, mass, critical mass, yeah. all different types of variables, I guess you could say. Once you put the 13 together, then you have every point of view. If you're dealing with people with functioning brains. So do you think, uh, like, nowadays, or, like, at least in the in the past, there were more people with functioning brains before, I don't know, say, I don't know. They had functioning brains, brain. but they didn't have the knowledge mm -hmm. to use them properly. Yeah. The more we gain the, the knowledge base, the more, the more they have to... In, in, inhibit our brain from functioning the way it was originally designed. Hmm. And there's a lot of people, there's people I, I can, like I sense, I see people who don't know about this stuff, but they have functioning brains, and a lot of them, you know, take drugs or whatever. Yeah. Wow. Years ago. They're, they're confused. <laughs> They, their brain is telling them something, and they look around and can't see it being applied. So rather than live in a world of drunks, mm -hmm. they become drug addicts themselves and live in their own world. This is a... Uh, well, that's that was like my that that was what my problem was in high school. Mm -hmm. I did stuff, experimented. <laughs> I guess I, I went through that, and everybody around me doing it. But I don't know for some reason I was different. Like most people, they just stay in that world, and I just looked at it all. I was like, can't do this. <laughs> Once, once you've uh, done drugs, and, and alcohol is, is just another drug, mm -hmm. uh, there comes a point where you say, is that all there is? Yeah. And uh, no, there is more, but...
but you can't see it while you're in that state. Mm -hmm. So you make a conscious decision to set that stuff aside and grow up. Mm -hmm. Deal with reality is is, uh, much more exciting than than waking up with a hangover. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, like you start dealing with like... uh then you see people who are like still like in that regressed state, like children. Yeah. Around. Hey, go to a tavern and and yeah. listen to the conversation. Oh man, I can't do it. Silly. Yeah. Stupid. And yet, when you're drunk, it all sounds normal. <laughs> Another movie I saw. It was pretty. Uh, Pretty sick movie, man. I, I was watching uh, Caligula. Yeah. I don't know how like close the story. Well, it, you know, it's supposed to be untrue. It's supposed to be that he was in fact a guy who wanted to do the right thing. So history treats him badly and oh. calls him all kinds of names, but that in fact he was a person of ethical conduct and and who who was trying to get to the bottom of the problem. Wow, and he just totally reversed it and he just Yeah. But on the other hand I've seen how like they had all these orgies and stuff. That I don't think that's too far from the truth how Rome degener- degenerated. Yeah. Like that it became because I I see it now. It's just a more sophisticated Got to remember, Caligula has Gula in the name. Gula, Gulag. Yeah, Gula <laughs> is uh, like ragu, rigo. Mm. And, uh, it's basically a hint at the things to come, rather than the things that were. And then in that word, all do I mean, it's saying the red one man, I guess. But when they're saying this red, are they, talk, are they referring to genetic engineering? Well, alder is a tree. It is the basic um, deciduous tree. Mm-hmm. Trees do not grow anywhere. Deciduous trees need to grow under the protection of coniferous trees. So when you're dealing with the word alder, Mm -hmm. which is also the word elder, if you change it feminine to masculine, uh, what it's saying is of the second generation, the, um, the oldest is feminine. Now, that's leaving the wa- the door wide open for saying, therefore, of the first generation, was the oldest of them masculine? If it was masculine, then how did it reproduce? So you're talking about Neanderthal and clan mother? Yeah. But they were twins, you, you were saying. Like they basically yeah. were around the same time, so how can yeah. one be older? Yeah. That's why it doesn't make any sense. Because how could Neanderthaler have reproduced itself when it first began, unless it too was a hermaphrodite? Now, an event may have come about in a a twin clan mother mm-hmm. that caused the splitting of the genders and the Neanderthaler the then became a two gender uh, society which would explain how it was then able to assist the clan mothers in Africa uh, to do something likewise but uh, the, the ancient history of the Neanderthaler is very complicated 
uh, what we know uh, suggests that that they were a fairly large number, and from that number, a number in the vicinity of 144,000 were in fact frozen in time and then brought back to life. And yet these individuals are the ones we know today as Neanderthalers. And the other ones died out, I think? The other ones were, were basically their assistants. And at one stage of the game, I would suggest that they decided to get rid of their assistants but in fact could not until they had replacement and clan mother would have provided some assistance to them uh, over an intermediary period of time. And then when they broke with clan mother, that's when they made Cro-Magnon to be their assistant. So. They go through a number of evolutions and all the time are passing the knowledge on to computers. And at one stage of the game, the computer decides, I don't need these people. I can, I can do this on my own. And uh, says, hey, in, instead of limiting the damage to the surface of the Earth, the next time around, let's allow damage to take place all the way down to the upper mantle. Since the computers are located within the upper mantle and are protected from water and fire, according to all the allegories, mm -hmm. they will survive. But the moho discontinuity, along with the plates of the earth and the oceans, would basically be destroyed, becoming black water. I would the word this thing, crow magnum, the, the crow. It is it like uh, is the raven the same thing or is it like part of the yeah, same? Well, raven is is basically uh, ave ave genetically engineered version. Oh, really? Because the virgin birth. Yeah. Because when you see um, uh, the raven, I was reading a little bit on it, said um, that it, it lives Edgar up to Alan like. Allen uh, Poe's raven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was just going to say that too. Yeah, and uh, they said that it lives 100, 100 it could live like 100 years, they said, up to 100 years. And yeah, and I was, and then when you say never more, and his. Poem. Yeah. Never, never, is never more Lenore basically means never, never more the black man. Lenoir. Mm, yeah, yeah. So what what is being suggested is that there is a movement away from the black African and what Obviously, because of the way they set up slavery in the old days, mm -hmm. they wanted that movement to be uh, a halfway point between the Caucasian and the African. And the first basically makes the pan mm -hmm. is pan. The first country was the first country to use that as the name. Was it? Uh, because I, I was looking up uh, in India, the religion, they called it Hindustan. Like they first, and then I guess over time, it had yeah. to extend. Expanded to all the other is then. As they were creating more and more people in the Himalayas, uh, distributing them, of course, the places closest to the Himalayas, would carry the, the word is Sam. Nancy, Saint. So it's all suggesting that they are fascist 
in their belief, mm -hmm. which basically means military command, mm -hmm. and and uh, they would be uh, ancient, viewed as ancient holy men and saints that they would create a mirror image in the word Tain, T-A-I-N. They would, uh, in fact, not be what they seem to be in the word Ain't. Yeah. How's that link to uh, the word S-T-A-I-N, Stain? Yeah. And they would be stained in color, oh. being mulatto. It seems like in the, in that in that book, the New Atlantis, like Bacon hints that these new signs, like how they practice all the science and stuff, uh, seems like these are happening in like it's like monasteries and, and underground and mountains and stuff. Yeah, well, that's. That was uh, the Taoist monastery, the the Buddhist monastery, the um, the Zen monasteries of Japan, and all those people. And he has that too. He's like, he's like people like Columbus. And all the inventors of things were just people, I guess, who served them, and they just gave them credit for something sure. else. Sure. Sure. It's like this book is like I showed that to some other people and they're like, Oh well it's this why well, is this making all this is being made public to us and yada 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 like this is you're not um Yeah, but you gotta like being let down a path and this this is in the sixteen hundreds. Yeah. Sixteen twenty six. So you're you're not basically dealing with the end result of the uh, industrial age, mm -hmm. but yet you're being told beforehand what the industrial age will bring about. Yeah. That's what because all the things they're talking about is science you see right here around you. Yeah. So. Because he's getting the information from Persia, and and Persia gets the information uh, directly from the Himalayas, and and therefore they all know about genetic engineering and, and all that stuff. And they manufacture religion as as a way of uh, divide and conquer. So what like what they do they sort of like do it's like a red herring like uh, like a distraction like they'll have a civilization that's really uh, you know, powerful it's it's known but the real stuff is being done in a little place called the Himalayan mountains so you don't even hear anything yeah <laughs> uh. empires serve a purpose yeah. and their purpose comes and goes and the empire must go with it. Yeah. So they they basically funnel information and and finance and all of that into a group of people, build up their military and and technological might, and then at the appropriate moment they do technology transfers, move everything out of that place. Destroyed internally with illegal immigration and and mm -hmm. credit crunch and all of that stuff. So it, empires can be built and they can be destroyed when they're done. As far as anybody could see, the northern hemisphere's uh, purpose is finished. So we have to be removed first, but all of the things we learn must be double-checked uh, before it becomes part of the final program, so the Southern Hemisphere, having fewer people, is being kept as the beta test site for another thousand years, and 
and they'll they'll be removed as well, along with the Moho discontinuity, and then everything will stop probably for 10 to 12,000 years while Alder Amin comes and goes. And uh, then as, as the conditions return to normal, the, uh, the computers will generate the new slate and, and use some for its own purposes. They normally have three levels of uh, uh, people around them so that the outside world has no direct contact yeah. with them. Because uh, in these movies, too, it gives you, like, hints because they always show, like in Star Trek, they show this planet that's half light, half dark. And yeah. On the dark side, they had this race of people who they just, they called them lithium mines, and they dug underground. And these mines have it looked like something <laughs> underground. Like, well, they, you know, you can't be fooled by appearance. Yeah. Genetic engineering, by its very nature, suggests uh-huh. that you can make anything. Yeah. It's even being discussed in in Bacon's uh, New Atlantis. Uh, you know. The color, the gender, the size, mm-hmm. all of that stuff is, is irrelevant uh, except for the task at hand. So whatever the task is will determine what the person looks like. Uh, I just out to some other books out uh another person uh, who looks at your work. You show she... I seen a post on the internet. It was uh, some stuff like uh, some books on like a lot of books came out like on like this hollow earth theory they call it. Yeah, yeah. that that was really silly. Yeah. I thought it was just allegory or something. But... It was a basic cover up mm-hmm. for for anybody who was proposing that there might be a society that lived underground. So, you know, it's like Hollywood. They they always make movies to to criticize uh, and and make people look stupid if uh, if they're suggesting anything that the system doesn't want. Certainly, Mel Gibson's uh, conspiracy theory movie yeah. demonstrated that in a, in a very direct way to, to my approach to doing things yeah. since the movie began by killing the subscribers to the guy's paper. Yeah. Well, in, in these movies, all I see is just telling me what's coming down the past. It's, just tell, it's so, it's crazy when you think about it. You live in a world where they are telling you but not telling you in the way people are used to getting told things. Yeah. And you can understand that language, and other people are saying, well, how do you, like, uh, what do you talk like? like they, one one guy was saying, like, uh, like, it's like, like they were misleading people by telling people this, but not if, nobody can see it except a yeah. select few. I guess you gotta always keep that in mind that uh, yeah. if you're used to looking at these things. You always have to know uh-huh. that they're they part of their fun comes from telling people. Yeah. But at the same time they don't want people to know enough that they do something about it. Yeah. This is just like um when I'd watch um when I was young, I'd watch cartoons like Superman, all these things, and then the bad guy would be like, yes, and just tell the whole plan. <laughs> he would just tell his whole plan. What remember he <laughs> remember that Superman always went to the telephone company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He only became powerful once he was backed up by a phone booth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I was watching.
watching a while ago, like uh, a Batman or Robin one, and it was like the old one. And when you look at the costumes, man, these guys are wearing stockings and little tight shorts and stuff. <laughs> he just, uh, and, and yeah, but they show that like how he was a philanthropist, Bruce, uh, with Bruce Wayne. And 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 you know, like he liked to go in a cave as alter ego. Well, he had a butler who would watch over him. Yeah. In a catmobile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they always throw these little hints. Instead of, instead of having the catmobile being a communication system. They had it as a transportation system. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to learn more about, uh, like, you, you seem to more, be know more about, like, uh, I lived it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, you lived longer. So. Difficult for a lot of people to accept that fact. Okay. Uh, but it's not for me. But how would that, that must have been more intense because you said you really grasped everything at 47. So for it to always just come tumbling down at 47, just to always hit you? Well, uh, 47, I started to sober up. Uh. And by 57, I knew what was going on. And by 67, I could explain it to other people. Oh. So well, it, you, it got, you got a, pretty a good at that. transition mm-hmm. that took place. I, you got pretty good at, like, just telling the story like that. Well, I see it as a story. So I just tell people what I see. Everything to me is like a plate of glass for each thousand years. And they're all tiled one on top of the other. And I look back in time by looking through these plates of glass. Not only can I position events in the past, Mm -hmm. but I can see them in their relationship the things that came before and things that come later. Yeah, and that, that's a good uh, analogy uh, on the post you put a while ago. It's like the Cain and Abel inside everybody. Like yeah. the Cain is the reasoning. and Yeah. But this, for now, and then you have, you go into the past and think long term using the Abel part of yeah. you. I guess that's that what they mean by able man, young able yeah. man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Abel, Ma Bell. Yeah. Yeah. Ma Ball, Ma Bell. The communications network. But they they don't they, in America they wouldn't call him Ma Bell. Well, we used to have Bell as a phone company, but then yeah, that's how they disguise it. They, they broke it up and. And called it AT and T, which is basically the number eight when you phonetically pronounce it. Eight, eight, eight T and T. Eight, eight. Yeah. Eight, the new eight is what they're making. Is the new plays is a squared eight instead of a round. Uh, yeah, when you look at the symbology too of like the things that like I see like the symbols like I don't know, they like talk to your mind as <laughs> well. I don't know how you describe it, but uh like when you look at them and like the DNA symbol and I think I told you this before, like like I was looking at the the am- amber sand and you look at it backwards. Yeah. And it's DNA and, and it's looks like a DNA strand that's cut off. Yeah. Ampersand is uh, basically a play on amber. Amber is the color yellow. 
Amber is the color of transition. Oh. So these colors that were picked to use in traffic lights, they weren't picked haphazardly. Was- no, no. Green is going towards the future. Yeah. Red is leaving the past behind. But why do we stop? You have to stop while it's moving in front of you, while it's got the right of way. But once it's out of the way, Mm -hmm. then you get to go forward. And you're always going on green. So green land produces the egg, and the snow pea is green, Mm -hmm. which is the iPod. And everybody is into a green revolution. Why would they make money green? Because it is the thing that advances the plant. Mm. They only make it green in the U.S. Though. Because the every US... place else has gone to multicolored money. So yeah, I was looking uh, and and the picture like the Desdemona because you sent one in a post, and um, I think it's when you actually look at the pictures and try to like I guess use your imagination. But there's some other ones that, like I'm gonna need some help on, <laughs> like um, like the whole letter alphabet. Like I I can, you know. Yeah, well, you need to to be in the milieu, you know, in the place where it's being talked about all the time. Much of this just, you can't do it on your own. It has to be linked to some event when oh. you're talking about it. So we can talk about all day on the phone, but it's not going to do it. It doesn't like basically said. link it to anything. That's the problem. Osmosis is the best way of teaching. As you're moving along through the day-to-day activity, things pop up and you put it in the context of the code. And after a while, it becomes second nature. It's like having learned another language. Yeah, well, I need um, money to uh, get up there. and. Um... Well, the time will come. Yeah, it's gonna come. I I, I want to do it before this year's over, and, and you, winter time's not good for you, right? Well, winter time limits the ability to to get around. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's not useless, but it's not the same thing because much of this is linked to nature, mm-hmm. and winter is the time when nature basically goes to sleep. Mm-hmm. And you don't get to see the plants and the animals and all acting together in concert with human beings in the same way. When everything is the same color, everything is is the same temperature, and it's cold. I love winter time because of my body structure. I even sweat in the winter <laughs> when it's uh, 20 below zero. I, I mean, uh, doesn't the body uh, get used to the, these things? And I, I think we're all different. You know, some some people perspire. I sweat. I I couldn't go to dances when I was young uh, and stay there for more than the first or second dance, then I'd have to go home because I'd be soaking wet. <laughs> well, and I can I sweat during the winter, like I guess when I have all the hot things on. Well, See, I'm walking. You, you build the heat not only from the uh, the clothes you have on because you can be cold with uh, fifteen layers of clothes on you. Mm-hmm. The The most important heat mechanism comes from food. So when you eat, you get warm from the inside out. Clothes can't.
can't do that for you. Even blankets on a bed. You can wake up in the middle of the night and have 10 blankets on you and you're still cold. And what you need is to put food in your body so that your body can produce the internal heat that doesn't happen. Preventing cold does not make heat. You know, I know something with me. Maybe it's not a good thing, but um, I, I can't sleep. Like if I don't eat anything or like drink a yeah. glass of milk, it yeah. keeps me up if, I'm, if I have an empty stomach. Yeah, because you're uncomfortable if if you're cold. Body needs food in order to make all of the systems function. So your heart pumping, your lungs working, all of that needs energy. If you go to bed without eating. You're depriving everything. That's why they say, you know, malnutrition will cause children to grow up handicapped. I I look at food differently now, like especially that I work now. I've been working every day. It's just, it's like a a, a battery for a pocket of time. Because all I do is just burn it off. Well, it's my bedtime, Gert. It's, uh, it's time for you to go. Yeah, i got to have a, a snack and then go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good. Okay, we'll talk to you again. All right, bye. Bye.